Welcome to Lord of Life Church. My name is Pastor Matt, and I'm so thankful you have tuned in to worship with us online. Today, we're going to explore one of Christ's parables, the parable of the sower. The sower scatters his seed, and some of it falls on good soil, and it grows and produces a bountiful harvest. God wants our heart to be like that good soil, where he can plant the seed of his word and produce a harvest for his kingdom. We'll find out more about this parable, and we'll apply it to our lives. Vacation Bible School was last week, and it was awesome. So many children here. We had 135 children. That's the most we've had in my eight and a half years at Lord of life. We had 71 volunteers and there were games, there was Bible story time, there was crafts and opening and closing, singing to Jesus, learning about him through skits. And at the very end, there were nine people that ate crickets to celebrate the $900 given to support Urban Youth Ministry. It was an awesome week, and I want to say thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your partnership in the gospel. Each week, we have a devotion available on our YouTube channel, so please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you're notified when the next devotional is available. And finally, I invite you to financially support the work of God's kingdom by responding to God's generosity and being generous to him because he's given to you his one and only son. When we give financially, we help to produce a harvest for God's kingdom. So I invite you to visit our website, lolchurch.net. Click on give in the upper right-hand corner, and there you'll be prompted to give a one-time gift. You can watch this short tutorial to learn how to set up a recurring gift online. You can also give by mail. Simply mail your gift to P.O. Box 251, Wasco, Illinois, 60183, and your gift will reach the church. And finally, I invite you to give by text. It's secure and convenient right from your device. Simply text this number, 630-381-1199. Type the word give, and you'll be prompted to give either a one-time or a recurring gift. God is making disciples here in our midst, and I'm so thankful for our partnership in the gospel. Just last Sunday, Grace Reed was baptized at this baptism font. Here are a few photos, and God gives his grace to all ages, and we're so thankful that he's raising up disciples of all ages to follow him and to know him, the one true God. Would you please join me now as we unite our hearts in prayer, praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now sing to the Lord. Song, part of my own heart. 
The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 55. This is when the Lord makes the promise that his word will not return void. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower, and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire, and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The Gospel reading is the parable of the sower, Matthew chapter 13. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it fruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. 
he produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Lord God, thank you so much for your word. We pray that we would be receptive soil, that we would have a receptive heart for you to plant your life-giving seed, your word, into us, and that we would produce a bountiful harvest for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I'm going to preach on the parable you just heard read. It's the parable of the sower. And what is a sower? Well, here's a painting of a sower. And you can see that a sower is someone who scatters seed to produce a harvest. The parable makes me think of my alma mater. I graduated from Concordia University, Nebraska in 2003. The school mascot is a bulldog, but the newspaper is called the sower. When I was there, it was only a print version. Remember, I just turned 42 three weeks ago and I'm showing my age. Now, today, newspapers are available digitally, online. Go to C-U-N-E, that stands for Concordia University, Nebraska, sower.com, and you will read it. This is from this week's newspaper there. Concordia alumni awarded Teacher of the Year in Nebraska. In fact, the seal of the university has a sower illustrated in it, which you can see in the upper right-hand corner of the online paper. Here, I've enlarged it for you, and take a close look. There you can see the sower has a bag of seed, and the sower's right hand is in the position to toss the seed. And right below the sower, it says the seed is the word. And the Bible reference of this parable is Luke chapter 8. The parable is also in Matthew chapter 13 and in Mark. The school started as a Christian teacher's college, sending out trained and certified teachers into the world to scatter God's seed in schools to scatter God's seed and for the Lord to make it grow. Today's parable is quite unique because it's one of the few of Christ's parables where Christ gives us a detailed explanation of the parable's meaning. The sower scatters the seed and it falls on four different soils. You can see the four soils in this painting. A path, rocky place, thorns, and good soil. And some of the soil, it grows. The seed grows and produces fruit, but some of the soil, it doesn't grow. Jesus's point here is that Christ wants his audience and all of us to understand the word of God, to have deep faith roots, and to produce a harvest for the Lord's kingdom. God wants your heart to be fertile for his life-giving word. Not a hardened heart or a heart choked by the worries of life, a heart receptive to God with deep roots. I'll cover the four soils and we'll apply this parable to today. Jesus is on the shore of the Sea of Galilee when he tells the parable. A large crowd finds him. He gets into the boat while the People are on the shore, and he begins to tell many things in parables. It looks something like this. We don't really use the word sower today, so many translations use the word farmer. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. I have bird seed with me. We have many bird feeders at our house. And this is called thistle seed, and it's for a specific kind of bird. It's for house finches, for siskins, and for red poles. And so we use this seed, and we fill up our bird feeders. So this is meant for the birds to eat. But the sower's seed in this parable is not meant for the birds to eat. Here the seed is God's word. And the farmer scatters the seed, but the seed is eaten up, yes, by the birds. The path represents people who hear the message of sin, repentance, grace, and salvation in Christ, 
but they don't understand it. Then the devil comes along and snatches away what was sown in their heart. The application here is simple and clear. To seek to understand what Jesus says. Don't just hear it in one ear and out the other ear, but understand what it means. Understand the deeper meaning. If the word of God never takes root in your heart, the devil will snatch what is sown in your heart and your heart will become hardened toward God. I went for a run on the Great Western Trail by our house and didn't see anything growing on the path. There's plants growing on the side of the path, but not on the path itself. That's because it gets a lot of traffic, even animals. As I was running, I saw chipmunks scurry across the path and birds pecking the ground ahead of me, eating the seeds from the trees. I've seen deer along this path, dogs going for a run with their owner. It's not a good place to be a seed. It'll get trampled and eaten by the animals. Jesus explains this specific soil in more detail. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. So the application here is understand God's word and accept it with all of your heart. The devil's aim is to steal kill and destroy. And the devil's aim is to steal the life-giving seed of God's word from your life. If you don't understand something, don't give up on it. Pursue it. Seek to understand it. Investigate it for yourself so that the devil doesn't come along and snatch it away from you. When people don't understand God's word, they can get cynical. They can get really hard-hearted. They can just get bored with God. They can be ignorant of the truth. If any of these describe your response to God's word, that's a real red flag. Take the responsibility to understand God's word and you will know God in a very personal way. You'll produce fruit for him and his word will begin to take deep root into your heart. Jesus goes on and he explains the next soil. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and withered because they had no root. It's gardening season in Illinois. I sometimes call it weed pulling season. We love plants in our house. It's my wife's favorite hobby. In fact, a friend gave her this t-shirt years ago And at one time it read plant lady. You can see it's kind of falling apart, the P and the T. Many in our church and our community can relate with the farmer in this parable. We love gardening around here. The seed that falls in a rocky place is the person who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. They get it and they understand it. But since the roots are very shallow, The growth lasts only a short time. Look at this. Jesus said, but since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. What kind of tests? Did you notice what Jesus said? Because of the word. This is trouble for following Jesus. Everyone faces trouble in life. Jesus is specifically referring to trouble that comes from the word of God. The world is hostile to the word of God. The world is hostile to Jesus and rebels against God. Jesus said earlier that if the world hates you, remember that it hated him first. You will be tested in your Christian faith. The seed that is the word of God will shape your heart's convictions and you'll be tested to remain true to God, to not compromise the truth and to love all people, to be all in for Jesus in a world that's not. The apostle Paul, he writes the qualities of a pastor in one of his letters and one of them is not a recent convert. 
Because the man of God must have roots that withstand the ups and downs of ministry. Because the man of God must have roots that can endure fires and trials and tribulations. And there's a fire to put out almost every day as a pastor. Let me tell you, there are many highs and lows in ministry. The application is grow deep roots so you stand firm in your faith when trouble comes. Many people with shallow roots, they fall away when they see hypocrisy in other Christians. They fail to see their own sinfulness and they turn away from God in anger. Many with shallow roots fall away, duped by the lies of social media and the cancel culture of today. They're tossed around by lies and deception and confusion. God wants you to have deep roots so that you're not tossed like the sea when lies and confusion are posted somewhere online or are communicated on TV through a variety of sitcom shows or streaming services. When the world is emotionally screaming lies, you can discern the truth because you have deep roots. Make it your objective to understand the deeper meaning of God's word. When I preach, one of my objectives is to uncover the deeper meaning of God's word and apply it to your life so that we have deep roots. Here is an example of the deeper meaning. We must understand why death is here and there is a deeper meaning. Death is here because of sin, the sin of Adam and Eve. They fell and rebelled against God. So we must learn to master sin because it's so destructive and we can't master it on our own. I love what God said to Cain before Cain killed Abel in the book of Genesis. God said to Cain, if you refuse to do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires you. You must master it. So we must master sin, but we can't do it on our own because we are born into sin, original sin. Thankfully, we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who has no sin, and yet he became sin for us. He came to forgive our sins, to give us a clean slate, a clean record before God, and to keep us from sin so that we can master it with him and with the Holy Spirit. When we do fall into sin, God tells us what to do. We repent of our sin. We ask God for forgiveness and he forgives us. He is quick to pardon our sin. The Holy Spirit regenerates us and we learn to run away from sin and all that is evil. In Christ, there is freedom. Jesus said it. What is this freedom? It's the freedom from the mastery of sin. So that sin no longer masters us, but we are now belonging to God, obeying God with our whole heart. When we do break God's commands, he is there for us and he loves us with grace and kindness and he leads us back to righteousness. So this is the deeper meaning of sin, repentance, the cross, and God's grace. The resurrection gives us the power to live a new life, baptized in Christ, a new creation, like we talked about last week. We need to teach this to our children so they understand the deeper meaning, so that they have roots that go deeper and deeper. Amy and I recently bought two books to teach our children how to safely navigate the internet. Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, Junior and good pictures, bad pictures. The first one, the junior version, is for younger children, and the next version is for older children. We read the junior version to our four children the other night to teach them what to do when they see a bad picture online. To turn, to run, and to tell. To turn away from it, to run away from it, and tell mom and dad. We're starting early so that they understand what to do and so that they develop deep roots, safeguards on their own when they're online. 
An author I admire recently wrote, you don't give a baby a hamburger because they can't process it. They can't chew it. They aren't ready for it. It's not age appropriate for them. In the same way, you don't give a child unrestrained, unrestricted access to the internet. They're not ready for it. They don't know how to process it. They don't know how to chew it. It's dangerous for them. So we train them. When their mind is mature enough to understand the dangers online, so they eventually grow deep roots and they pass the test of safely navigating the internet on their own. The goal is for them and for all of us to grow deep roots and endure the troubles and the persecution of today. The goal is mature faith. I went to an educators conference years ago. You know, pastors are educators. And I heard a presenter talk about mature faith. He said that mature faith is like a coal, not a candle. What happens when the wind blows on a candle? It blows out. But what happens when the wind blows on a coal? Its heat comes from inside, not the outside. So the fire inside the coal grows when the wind blows. The wind represents the tests of faith. And more that you're in God's word, the deeper your roots, the more your faith will respond to the wind like a coal rather than the candle. As your pastor, my heart's desire is that we, God's church, will have coal-like faith fanned into flame by the word of God. And when the tests come, we will prove true in our faith to the Lord, that you won't be easily deceived by the agenda of the world. And we'll know how to navigate the times of today with wisdom, with gentleness and respect. Let God's word govern your life, every area of your life. Let it govern your digital life. Let it govern your health. Let it govern every area so that you have deep roots and you can spiritually see what's happening in the world. Jesus addressed spiritual blindness in this parable. The disciples asked him, why do you speak to the people in parables? Jesus answered, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom has been given to you, but not to them. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. With deep roots, you spiritually see what God cares about. His heart. You can see his heart from his word. And you can see his convictions, and they become your convictions. I have a folded piece of paper, and the left side is everything that God cares about. Imagine this with me. And the other side is what God doesn't care about. What goes on the left side? What does God care about? Well, I'll tell you that God cares about the matters of today. And we would be foolish to think otherwise. His creation, he cares for it. He cares that we care for it and that we pass it down as good stewards of it for the next generation. God cares about all human life, the born and the unborn. He cares about justice for all. He cares equally for people of every skin color. He cares about marriage between one man and one woman. He cares about gender, which is under fierce attack today. He cares about human sexuality sexual purity. God cares about you. He cares about the struggles that you face. He cares about teens today. He cares about your words, your actions, that you're gracious, loving, kind, and respectful. God cares about your ethics and your integrity, what you view online. He cares about all of it. As roots go deep, We understand that God really cares about the matters of today. And as roots go deeper, we spiritually see what's happening today, spiritually understanding spiritual blindness. 
and we can spiritually see and commit our lives to share God's convictions. Christ goes on and he explains the next soil. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. So here the seed has roots, and when the plant comes up above the surface, it's choked and never produces fruit. It's not able to flourish. Jesus explains this further. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. The love of money and the worries of life will keep people from being unfruitful for God. I have a Christian friend who follows the news so close it makes him angry. Political news, and he's bitter. I told him that he needs to guard his heart and not let the news fill him with hate and bitterness. I said, be informed about what's happening. But if you have no boundaries with it, it's a trap to consume your emotions and your heart with bitterness. My friend is a reminder that we should be informed about the world, but not let worry consume us so that we lose our sight of Jesus Christ. We must remain focused on Jesus in a world filled with so much noise and distraction. Plants above the surface, they can see the power of the sunlight. They can see the sun. And when we stay above the worries of this world, we see the sun, the son of God, and the power he gives us to trust in him in a world that is falling apart and in great trouble. Don't be that soil that grows deep roots but gets choked by the worries of the world. One of the best ways to keep from getting spiritually choked by the deceitfulness of wealth is to give back to God what he's first given to you. This is where many people don't have ears to hear what God says about money. God instructs us to put money in its rightful place by giving the first fruits of our income to the Lord. Do this and you will not only help your heart from the love of money, you'll not only guard yourself from the deceitfulness of wealth, but you'll produce fruit for his kingdom that will be 30, 60, or 100 fold of what was planted in you. The fourth soil is the good soil. This is the goal for us as Christians. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, 160 or 30 times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. So this is the person who hears the word and understands it, the deeper meaning, does what it says and produces a bountiful harvest for the Lord. Jesus explains the good soil. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. So God wants your heart to be fertile soil for his seed to produce a bountiful harvest for his kingdom. When I think of this good soil, I think of my friend Marty and his family who came to visit us shortly after we arrived in Illinois almost nine years ago. He brought with him a book that he was reading. He's a pastor in Arizona where there's a lack of water and it's always a concern. He was reading a book about water and the need for water today, especially in arid places. We got talking about the book and he said, guess what, Matt? The author ranks Illinois as the best farming climate in the world. The most mineral rich soil with ties to ancient glaciers, the best rain levels and seasonal temperatures for growing crops. Marty emphasized best in the world. I had no idea, but after living here for almost nine years and seeing the farming culture of our own local area here in Northern Illinois, it makes sense. John Deere, headquarters in Moline, Illinois, that's Northern Illinois, makes farming equipment for farmers around the world. 
ask farmers and they'll tell you this climate, this corner of the world is extremely fertile, extremely valuable, profitable, and yes, fruitful. In the same way, you are extremely valuable to God. You were created in his image to know God and be fruitful for him, leading others to also receive Christ as Lord. You have everything needed to produce an incredible crop for Jesus. You've been baptized in Christ. Talk about powerful water. You've tasted his goodness. You've experienced his grace and forgiveness through the cross. The love of God is deep in your heart. You trust in God and his victory over the grave. You have deep roots and you understand God's mercy. You see spiritually with your eyes and are focused on the Son of God. And here's the twist. Not only are you fertile soil, not only are you the good soil, valuable to God, God wants you to be the sower that scatters the seed of his word. He wants you to first receive his life-giving word for yourself and then to go scatter the seed and your family and your circle and your work life with your friends, with your online presence, with a holy life and with the example that you give. Teach the word to your children, to your grandchildren, so that they have deep roots. And if you have older children, pray for them and remind them of what they've been taught and do it with gentleness and respect. Remember God's promise, which we heard read in the first reading today from Isaiah chapter 55. My word goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. That's a powerful promise about God's word. And if you don't see the fruit of God's word in your lifetime or even now, Trust him and his promise that his word will not return void. So this is our prayer. We humbly invite you, Lord, to plant your word into our heart. We lay down our pride, the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and we want to understand your word. We invite you to grow deep roots in us so that we produce an incredibly fruitful harvest for your kingdom. We love you, God. Thank you for your life-giving seed that gives us faith to trust in you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, church. My name is Tim Christopher, and I am one of the seven elders here at Lord of Life, and I'm thankful to be here and serve. We are so blessed to have this place to serve and praise our Lord and Savior. We are thankful and blessed to have Pastor Matt and his family. We are blessed to have a praise man, our church staff, and all who serve the church family. God is good and always is with us. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Bow our heads, please. Father, touch our hearts this morning. Fill us with your love and peace to share with each other. Father, as we face afflictions, comfort us. Help us to find joy in all things. Protect us, Lord, and fill us with your spirit, leaving no room for the evil one. Father, we ask that you touch our hearts this week and encourage us to pray for our church and church leaders. Father, fill us with prayer for our youth, that they will find joy and hope in you. Father, we are so grateful for all the missions that Lord of Life We lift up this month's missions of the month and all who serve to glorify your kingdom. Father, we thank you for the military and all their leaders. We thank you for our police and firefighters and all who serve to keep us safe. Father, we ask for godly wisdom for our world leaders. At this time, we'll take a moment of silence and individual prayers and reflections. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We love you, Lord, and we praise you with all of our hearts. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you, Tim. We now go out like the sower and we scatter the seed of God's word and God makes it grow. And as you go, go with the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.